Hello, algebra students. Let's take a look at this challenging example of utilizing that formula sheet to solve. A sphere has a volume of approximately 268 cubic inches. Find the radius to the nearest inch of the sphere. So what are they asking us to do or to find? They'd like us to find the radius, and you might say, Kate, well, there's no radius formula on the formula sheet, and I would agree with you there. However, there is a formula that relates the two things we know about this sphere, or the two things they've talked about with this sphere, I should say. We've been asked to find the radius, but we know the volume. And there sure is a formula that relates the volume of the sphere to its radius. Let's go ahead and take a look at the formula sheet so we can see that. Here is the formula sheet that you'll have access to as you take your GED math test. The first two sections here, area and perimeter, those apply to two-dimensional shapes uh, like squares and circles. However, the next section, surface area and volume, those are our 3D shapes. And guys, I do highly recommend that you have one of these suckers printed out, if at all possible, so you can mark it all up as we go through these videos and get really familiar with this formula sheet. But the surface area and volume refer to those 3D shapes, and you can see a sphere, which is basically just a ball, is a 3D shape there. And we have two formulas related to it, SA equals 4 pi r squared and v equals four thirds pi r cubed. So which one do we need here? Well, we were looking for the radius. They both have radius, but what were we given? We were given the volume. So let's use that volume formula, the one with the v. So that's what we need there. We need the formula v equals four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, now that we've got the formula, you also will want your GED calculator, your TI-30XS multi-view, which you will have, okay? Every time you have a problem like this on the GED, you're gonna have that calculator. So if there was ever a problem that you wanted your calculator for, it's this one, because not only does it have a fraction, which is challenging to do without a calculator, we're going to need to deal with this R cubed, um, and we're going to need to do an operation that you wouldn't be able to do without a calculator, except by a very long, tedious guess and check method. So guys, go get your calculator. Okay, that's the main reason we're doing this. But anyway, enough lecturing. Let's start the problem. We know something about this sphere. We have this number 268, and it's important to know what that 268 represents. According to this, a sphere has a volume of approximately 268 cubic inches. So that 268 is the volume. So let's make sure that we put it in its right place, which is under the V for volume. Then we'll keep our equal sign steady. We'll keep numbers steady. Now let's talk about pi. Pi is not a variable, okay? It's not something that changes. It's a set number that never changes. And you might say, if it's a number, why do I write that symbol pi? It's because if I were to write it in its numeric form, it's a decimal that goes on and on and on forever, like literally forever, what we call an irrational number. And so mathematicians prefer to just call it pi. But when you're doing practical problems like this, like what show up on the GED, you're not going to keep a pi around because it doesn't make a lot of sense to students. And so what we have you do and what the GED formula sheet says to do is to use the decimal approximation of pi. And that's on that sheet right there at the bottom of that little section on surface area and volume. You can see where it says it, but it says pi is approximately equal to 3.14. That's what that little wavy equal sign means. Okay. That's all it means. I rounded. This is just a signal to people that it's not perfectly exactly 3.14. I did round to get it, but close enough. And so that's the value that we'll plug in for pi. And pretty much since it says that on the GED formula sheet, pi is approximately 3.14, you can just plug that value in when you see pi. There are examples in your college class where you'll keep pi around, but I've never actually seen that on the GED test. So we'll just use 3.14. All of that to say, there you go. I replaced pi with 3.14, and now there's my r cubed. Okay, nice. Now here's why I wanted my calculator with me. Lots of messy stuff in this problem. First thing I see here is the fact that I have three numbers 
multiplying. See how the four thirds, the 3.14 and the R cubed are all shoved together. Those three things are multiplying. Now you might say, but the R is being cubed. Yes, but that whole entire R cubed is multiplying with the other two numbers. Okay. And the deal is when you're solving equations that if you can do any simplifying before you start solving, do it. It'll make your life easier. And there is simplifying I can do. I can do this multiplication here. Now, good question. I mean, legit question. You could say to me, Kate, you said in the order of operations, I'm going to do exponents before I multiply. And I agree with you. But the only thing that's being raised to that exponent is that R. <laughs> and I'm I'm not going to multiply with that R. I'm going to multiply the other two numbers together. And since it doesn't matter what order you multiply in, this won't affect that R. And so it's no big deal, okay? So that's what I'm going to start with. I'll do four thirds. And if you know another way to multiply with fractions, that's fine. Uh, but this is the way I'm going to do it exactly the way I see it for those students who don't know another way. So four thirds times 3.14 simplifies to this ugly number. Now you might say, well, Kate, that just got worse. That's okay. I'm not going to write this whole thing down, but I am going to leave this whole thing in my calculator <laughs> so that I'm not going to lose any information as I do my work. And then I'll round at the very end. Okay. So it's a very good rule of thumb round at the end. So you don't lose any data. I don't think it'll happen too much on the GED because they know that students kind of struggle with rounding. They're not going to make that a huge issue. But when I used to tutor students in their college classes, I can't tell you how many students would be doing their online homework for their math class and submitting an answer again and again and again where they did all the work right, but they rounded so early they lost a little bit of information. And so they just had a little digit off in the hundreds or even thousands place, but the computer doesn't give you any feedback as to why your answer is wrong. And so they wouldn't know. They just keep thinking they did their math wrong, doing the problem over and over and over again, when all it was, was they lost some digits. Okay. So we're not going to lose any. And speaking of things, we're not going to lose. Let's not lose any other part of this equation. So we still did 268. We still have an equals. We've simplified this piece, but we still have an R cubed multiplying with that long, ugly 4.18, yada, yada, yada. Now, there's no more simplifying I can do, guys. Don't try to cube 4.18. That cube there is only on the R, okay? The 4.18 is multiplying with that entire R cubed. So that being said, it's time to start solving, time to start getting R alone by itself. And when we're solving, we actually work that order of operations backwards. So we're going to get rid of that multiplier before the exponent. So let's get rid of that multiplier. Now, how am I going to get rid of a multiplier? I'll divide it. So we're going to divide away that 4.18, yada, yada, yada. And again, you don't have to write the little dot, dot, dot. I'm just doing that for you to know that even though I didn't write it down, I'm going to keep all that dot, dot, dot in my calculator. Okay, so how do I do that? <laughs> this, is a, this is a calculator exercise, really, guys. So order matters when I divide. So don't just press divided by 268. I have to do 268 divided by. And now the nice thing is with this calculator, you just can arrow up to the number that you want so that you don't have to type all those digits there. That's why I said, keep it in your calculator. Don't clear. And then enter and we get this other ugly number, but that's okay. So from the left-hand side, 268 divided by 418, that's where I got that ugly number, 64.01, dot, dot, dot. And that's going to be approximately equal to, you can use a regular equal sign. I just should have been using this ever since I put in 3.14. But anyway, that's going to be equal to, if I'm multiplying and divide by 4.18, the only thing left on that right-hand side is that R cubed. Now, this is where a lot of students panic, stop freak out. They're like, the radius is 64, but R is not alone. Now there's not a number hanging out. That's a little tricky. You might say, Kate, that is a number. Not really. <laughs> that's an operation. Those powers up in the sky, that's an operation. This R just by itself is being what we call cubed. And so we have to know the opposite of that operation of cubing. Okay. So just like the opposite of square is square root you know, the opposite of cube, the little floating three is what we call cube root. And it looks the same with that little radical 
that check mark house it's called a radical but it has that three tucked in the check mark okay that's cube root and that's the opposite of cube so that's what i'm going to do to get rid of a cube i'm going to take the cube root of both sides and we can see once again how algebra is all about knowing what's backwards like it's all about knowing opposites inverses and so let's see what happens now cube and cube root are opposites they cancel so i'm going to know about what r is equal to and then now i have calculator work again and this one's tricky if you've never practiced cube root in your calculator you wouldn't know it it's kind of one of the reasons why we're doing this so you actually need to type the index first if you have anything higher than a square root so whether it's a cube root fourth root fifth root you won't see all that on the ged you might only see cube root but if it's a cube root you need to type the index that's the number in the check mark so that's the index okay you need to type that first and then you can use what's called the x root button so the x root button just has a little x tucked up in here and you can see that's in green middle left of your calculator anytime you want something in green you got to hit the green button and then you can pull up the green functions and see how that three jumped up okay so now we're taking the third root not just multiplying by three okay so the third root and again i want to take that whole big ugly number lose no information and I'm gonna enter that in there, okay? So I arrowed up, press entered on the number I want and it selected it. And now I'm gonna press enter again to simplify. And I see that my radius is for point yada, yada, yada. Okay, now we have a yada, 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 which means we need to think about rounding. Rounding directions might be specifically given. You might have a multiple choice where they're already rounded or it might be something that you just round a certain way because that's how it works in life. Like for example, money, we don't get any smaller than a cent. But in this case, we have rounding directions. Uh, problem says find the radius to the nearest inch. A lot of students get struggle when it says to the nearest inch or to the nearest foot or meter or a mile because that's not a place value. But when I say to the nearest inch or meter or a mile, I'm talking about a whole inch or a whole meter or a whole mile. And so what I'm saying is round at the decimal place. Next number I'm about to throw away is a zero anyway. And so, so is everything after that. So it really, it doesn't matter. This is really just about four inches. <laughs> you can see why I wanted to do this one with you, huh? Fractions, cubes, cube root, rounding, calculator gymnastics. It's a doozy. It's advanced. Honestly, it's probably even a little more challenging than what you'll see on the GED. They like the ones that feature R squared, not R cubed. But the last thing I wanted to have happen was for them to pick this one and you guys to lose your mind. Like, I've never seen this before. So now you're equipped if they try to throw this trick at you. All right, you guys, strong work. I'm super proud of you for sticking with me through that one.